Hi, I'm Jack Shelley and welcome back to another garden update. Um, I'm just out here in my veg patch today, um, grading some of the soil. Um, as you would have seen if you follow my social media, um, the soil here is really poor and has been waterlogged for a very long time, but in the lovely warm weather that we've had in this late February weekend, highs of 15 and sunny, which has been beautiful, um, it's actually become workable. So what I've been doing over the past few weeks is adding in copious, and I mean lots, of um, organic matter. So that's things like manure, I've got some compost to work in here, um, and digging it over as much as I can um, whilst ensuring that I am not compacting the soil too much either. And what it's done is the clay is still existing below, but there's this lovely layer now of topsoil which is a good inch or so that I've worked through and have continued to grade by taking these large clumps of clay out, um, which is now more suitable for planting, which is fantastic. I'm really pleased with how it's looking and I'm hopeful now that we'll definitely be able to grow something in here. How successfully, I'm not too sure, but um, time will tell as the season progresses. The other thing that I want to do today is plant out my joster berry. Um, now, I'll talk to you a little bit more about what a joster berry is in a moment. I'm going to plant it in this back corner here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to prepare the site um, by continuing to grade the soil. I'm going to remove any large clumps of clay that is in the soil there. Um, so as I said, I'm going to be popping in my joster berry, which is part of the Ribes family. Now, a joster berry is quite an unusual um, fruit bush, which is why I thought I'd give it a go um, and see what it was like. So a joster berry is a cross between a black currant and a gooseberry. And what it's done is it's taken the size of a gooseberry, but the colour and flavour of a black currant, which is characteristically quite small, um, and combined it together. So you get these large fruits that are deep purple in colour, as you can see here. They have quite a nice flavour, so I'm told, though I've not tried one myself, um, and they're brilliant for preserves and bits and pieces like that. It's a medium-sized fruit brush, so you could also grow it quite easily in a container. I'm going to be popping mine in the back corner here. They liked a partially shady site or somewhere that's fully sunny, and will eventually grow to about a metre wide and about the same tall, perhaps a little bit more. So you do need to give them a reasonable amount of space. And if you are popping it into a container, make sure you choose one that's going to be quite large in size, maybe at least 30 centimetres diameter, something like that. You want to keep it well fed throughout the season, particularly while it's getting established and in its first year especially as well, keep an eye on the watering. You want fruit bushes and fruit trees for that matter to bed in really, really well. So plenty of organic matter and plenty of watering to get them off to the best start. Now this jostaberry here has started to come into leaf. Um, and one of the other things to mention with these is that if we have a very, very cold uh, snap, with frosty conditions, snowy conditions, they will need a little bit of protection. So do bear that in mind as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dig quite a large planting hole, as I said, remove some of the clay bits and pieces that are in the soil and then uh, surround it with some fresh soil mixed in with some of the soil taken out to hopefully get it off to a great start. And then it's just a case of a bit of trial and error with this. I've never grown one before. As I said, it's a hybrid across between two other fruit bushes. Um, I've grown black currants before and I've grown gooseberries before but obviously seeing it hybridised together is going to be quite interesting. So I'm going to dig out that planting hole now. So what I've done with the planting hole is I've actually dug it quite a bit deeper than the pot that it's currently in. Now you'll want to do this if you're planting directly into a clay, horrible sort of sandy whatever this soil is here, like mine. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to then get your fork, once you've dug the depth, just puncture a few holes in there to aerate it where you can. Then I'm gonna, as I say, mix in lots of organic matter and some compost into there, um, and then it'll be ready for planting. So for this, I'm just using um, a multi-purpose compost with added John Innes. Now, that means it's a, uh, a loam based compost with added sand um, and fertilizer so it's really good for all kinds of planting purposes really um, and is really going to give it a bit of a boost and help alleviate some of this clumpy clay um, that the plant will actually be going into 
when you're planting things out into the garden you don't want to completely line the hole with fresh compost because what that does is it means the roots stay within the nice compost and they don't go off and explore what you want to do is you want to mix it in with the soil that you took out um, and then you backfill with because that will encourage the roots to go out and search for water nutrients other things rather than staying bedded in the fresh compost they'll establish much better so i am just adding a bit to the bottom and then i'm going to start adding some to the soil that we're going to backfill around it if you're planting it into a container uh, your joster berry and the same principle applies for if you're planting a black currant or a gooseberry on their own rather than a hybrid um, you'll want to use a good quality free draining compost such as a multi-purpose with john innes or something like john innes number three so that it's nice and free draining but has a lot of extra nutrients and things in there too and you want to make sure that the soil level for planting is pretty much the same as it is in the container you don't want to plant it too deep because then you risk rotting the stem and if it sits proud then it's going to dry out too quickly and it's going to look really unsightly so we're not a million miles off here so i'm just going to add a little bit more compost to the soil taken out and then we'll be ready to plant it that looks like it's going to be about right so then take your fingers cover the top of the plant and gently pull out of the container if it's very root bound this one isn't but if it is wrapped around the bottom you'll want to tease gently tease some of these roots out this because it's not particularly well root bound in there has pretty much done it already so i'm going to leave it like that i'm going to sit it in and actually out of the pot still a bit too low so i'm just going to add a little bit more compost that looks like it's going to be about right What I'm doing as I'm going along is I'm removing any really hard clumps of clay that have hardened off. They're just no good to anything. Whereas if they're soft, you can still break it up a little bit. You can see that what the compost does in a clay soil is it just breaks it up and stops it from clumping together so easily, which is exactly what you want it to do, exactly what you need for plants to establish well. And normally, what I would recommend doing is then firming it down with your feet, so treading it in. In this instance, because the soil is so very wet and full of clay, that will just compact it and it won't allow any air into the soil. So I'm actually gonna just leave it as it is. And if it's gonna be dry, and particularly if it's gonna be dry for a long period of time after you planted it, I would advise giving it a drink. The soil's very wet here, so I'm gonna leave it for now. And I did water it in its container just before it went in. So I am gonna leave it for now, but do bear that in mind, especially if you're planting it a bit later when the warmer weather really comes along. And that's all there is to it. Again, if you're planting it in a container, I'd recommend giving it a good drink. Uh, make sure you've got drainage holes at the bottom. And then if you're in normal garden soil, do give it a gentle firm in with your feet around the outside. Then I'm just going to pop a label in behind it. Just so I know where it is. And that's it. I'm back in the greenhouse now for a minute and whilst the weather this weekend has been fabulous and abnormally warm um, it's still a little bit early to sow most things. Um, as you saw in my previous video I've sown my Brussels sprouts, my first batch, and I've sown my first early peas. Um, I will quickly just show you now the Brussels sprouts so they have actually started to come up the seedlings are germinating which is very exciting um, they're going to be ready to prick out and pot on probably in another 7 to 14 days something like that um, I think what I'll do is I'll do that and pot them on first before planting them out because it is still quite early um, but we'll see how it goes if the temperature stays mild and sunny and the ground isn't too wet I can transplant them straight out when they're a bit bigger but I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to prick them out and pot them on first so they're coming out that's really exciting the peas um i believe are rooting um, but they haven't actually germinated in terms of the stem coming up above the soil yet i'm not going to sow anything else today just because um 
I don't know what the weather's going to do. The temperature in the greenhouse overnight is still dipping down quite low. So I don't want to risk putting loads of seeds in for then nothing to happen and for it to be a bit of a waste of time. What I am going to do though is I've got some sweet peas to plant. Now is a great time to do that if you've got a cold frame or an unheated greenhouse. Um, and it's super simple to do. If you get them in now and you give them a good start, you'll get flowers quite early in the season and then they'll carry on right the way through, so long as you're picking them and deadheading them. So now's a great time to do that job, so that's what I'm gonna get on with today. There are two varieties I'm gonna be planting. One is called Here Come the Girls, which is this um, highly fragrant mix of pinks, creams, purples, a really nice combination of colors there. And the other one I'm going to be planting is called Turquoise Lagoon. Um, these have got almost an iridescent kind of look about them. They're kind of bluey pinky colour, so I'm quite interested to see how those turn out. Now with sweet peas, what you want to do is make sure that you have soaked them overnight, ideally. It's not essential, but to get them off to the best start, just to soften the hard outer casings. And that will hopefully help um, ensure that your seeds germinate with more success. So I have done um, with these ones here, I've dried them off on some tissue paper um, ahead of putting them in. Um, they're quite small um, and they do look different to your normal pea seeds that we planted a couple of weeks ago, um, but the process is pretty much the same. So what you need to do is choose a cell tray again because they've got quite long root systems, they'll be thankful for having the extra room to get started in these cells. Use a good quality seed compost, which is this here, it's taking out any of the really large clumps because you don't want those getting in the way of germination. And you want these pretty full. Scrape the excess off the top so that you're starting level and just gently press in like that. If it does sink down quite a bit, then just add a little bit more soil back on the top. Then once you've got your trays filled with compost, use a dibber or your finger and go into the centre of each and just create a small hole, no more than a couple of centimetres deep. And once you've got your holes, take your seeds and gently put just one seed in each of those, ensuring that it does go right to the bottom of the hole that you just created. You don't want to put in more than one per hole, just so that the plants aren't competing with each other. And once you've done that, you then just need to lightly cover with some more seed compost. and then I just tap to level like that. And it's as simple as that. Make sure the soil stays moist, but not absolutely saturated. And keep an eye on them, germination should take seven to 14 days in a cold, unheated greenhouse. Down here on the patio, um, there's still not a huge amount happening, quite a bit of tidying for me to be getting on with, but I did want to just highlight my Daphne I have two Daphnes, one at the front of the house and one at the back here. They're one of my favourites for late winter and early spring scent. They're evergreen plants and they come in a whole different array of um, varieties. You can get some that are variegated, some that are just dark green, some with smaller foliage, some with bigger, and you can actually get some deciduous varieties. Um, this one, Oreo marginata, I've had for a while. Um, it needs a bit of a feed and it's been quite cold, which is why it's looking a bit yellow, but actually the plant itself is fine and healthy. It's fantastically fragranced and these flowers here 
just smell absolutely beautiful. And when you're brushing past or just working in the garden, or if you've got the window open in the living room as we've got behind us, you get these absolutely beautiful wafts of scent coming through from this, even just a small plant like this. So if you haven't grown a Daphne, I would wholeheartedly recommend it. And both of mine are in containers. They seem to fare quite well in containers, though do just bear in mind they don't like being moved. So once they're in a pot, make sure it's got enough room to spread and grow because you don't want to be potting it up every year because they're very slow growers. They take a while to get established and you don't want to be disturbing the roots that often. But it's in full flower now. This will carry on flowering probably for another week or two. Um, there's some new buds coming just at the bottom and then it will go into its active period of growth where it will throw out lots of new leaves, hopefully, um, during the rest of the summer. The other plant to update you on is, of course, the grevillea. Um, unfortunately, it still hasn't flowered but the buds on it here are starting to colour up. So I'm hoping that by next week's episode, I'll be able to show you this with some of its beautiful, vivid red flowers. It really is quite stunning. There are loads of buds on here. I'm hoping most of these are going to come out. Fingers crossed it doesn't get cold so that it doesn't struggle again. Um, but I just thought I'd share with you that it is happening and that hopefully I'll be able to show you why this is such a beautiful plant to grow as well, if a bit unusual. That's all I've got time for um, and that's all I really need to do this weekend in the garden so thanks for joining me on another garden update. You'll start to see now that I'll be splitting out as well into smaller clips the sowing advice, the planting advice that I'm doing so if you don't have time to watch a full garden update you can just dive right in and get the information that you need. So do keep an eye out for those, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future garden updates. I'll be back next week with a bit more work to be done in and around the garden. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.